in the year 11,941, following the alien invasion and the foundation of the lunar base, 12 Yorha androids were sent on a mission to Earth to destroy an enemy server located beneath Mount Ka'ala. The mission was deemed top secret and was considered as a test run for the newer models of Yorha androids. However, as they were descending, the squadron was attacked and only 4 out of the 12 original squad members survived. G-16, S-21, A-4, and A-2. Following the death of the squadron's assigned leader, A-1, A-2 filled her position as leader for the remaining androids. Shortly after having landed on Earth, the Yorha units met with a group of local resistance androids that were battling against the machine lifeforms as well. The resistance force consisted of nine androids, Lily, Sonia, Erika, Margaret, Xion, Dahlia, Gerbera, Anemone, and their leader, Rose. They were all part of an earlier android descent mission that took place 200 years before the new model's mission. During an assault against a large number of machine lifeforms, the resistance force came across a 2 squad as they were fighting the same group of enemies. Unsure if whether they could be considered friendly or not, Rose's group pulled their weapons on the Yoha units once the machines had been put down. The Yoha team explained that they were a new model of android that had been sent down to help in the war against the machines, but Anemone questioned them once again, as they hadn't been informed about any new models arriving. Because of the visors that they wore, Anemone found them hard to read and therefore decided that it would be best to be extra cautious. The Yorha androids explained that their mission was to be kept secret, and Anemone reacted negatively to this by threatening to kill them. The resistance leader Rose attempted to calm Anemone, but this only spurred Lily on, who questioned if they were really androids and not just evolved machine lifeforms. G-16 drew her weapon and pointed it at Anemone as if to challenge her. Dahlia responded by stepping out in front of Anemone with her weapon drawn as well. But before their battle could begin, Yorha Unit A2 spoke up and reasoned how her team was at a disadvantage after having lost the majority of the squad during their descent, and what they needed the most was allies and not more enemies. After having explained that they'd been assigned the job to take out an enemy server, the resistance leader Rose decided to let the Yorha units join their squad. As they spent time together, the other androids learned to see the Yorha units as companions. Out of curiosity, A4 questioned why they chose to not use their assigned code numbers. Rose explained that they used name that she had assigned instead. She then suggested giving the Yorha units names as well, to which A2 replied saying that it would only be a waste to name them as of now, and that they should wait until after they had completed their mission instead. Rose agreed and said that she would think of a name until then. Although the resistance group and the Yorha units managed to overall mix together quite well, Anemone was still unsure about putting her trust in the new units. Because the resistance squad had been abandoned ever since their initial Initial descent 200 years ago, she didn't want to trust any new androids just because they happened to say that they were allies. Lily noticed Anemone's distant attitude and decided to approach her. But just as Anemone was about to reassure her that she was fine, Lily suddenly screamed. Rose was the one who kicked into action first, screaming about how Lily had become infected. On instinct, they all drew their weapons and pointed them at Lily, who only continued screaming. She had been infected by a logic virus, which infected an android system to overwrite their data. S21 spoke up. Although she had been considered the calm and collected one, she was screaming at the rest of the group to not kill one of their own before attempting to save her. But before they were able to act, Lily had begun attacking them. With her limits turned off, she was able to send other androids flying through the air. Dahlia and G16 tried to hold her back, but she threw them off with ease. A2 and A4 managed to wrestle Lily to the ground as S21 tried to reprogram her to get rid of the virus. Before she knew it, Anemone had rushed to hold Lily down as well, much to Rose's surprise. Anemone couldn't help but to ask herself how many of their infected friends she'd been forced to put down. She reflected on why they'd give each other names, as it only made things harder for the heart she wasn't supposed to have. They all continued on to the enemy server to carry out their mission, but the enemy fire was strong. A2 called command in an attempt to get them to send down reinforcements, but her request was denied, and they realized that they'd been abandoned by the moon. 
G16, Lily, Thalia, and Marguerite all agreed to stay behind to hold the enemies off so that the others could proceed. At this point, they had all accepted that this was going to be their final mission. They managed to reach the elevator that would take them down to the server, but as S21 started to scowl at the elevator, Anemone couldn't help but to doubt the success of their plan. S21 told the rest of them to get in as she stayed behind to hack the terminal in order to gain access. However, Anemone suddenly decided to stay behind together with S21 instead of going with the others on the elevator. Rose looked concerned, but she allowed Anemone to stay behind with S21 as the door shut. Anemone then looked at S21 only to see her eyes glow red as she thanked Anemone for staying behind with her. Anemone drew her weapon and sighed. She'd seen infected comrades before and couldn't leave her to die alone. She promised she would end S21's life once the elevator reached the enemy server. A huge explosion shook the halls and they both realized it meant the end of the squad members that had stayed behind. From inside the elevator, A2 cried that she had to go back and save G16 and S21. In an attempt to talk some sense into her, Rose explained that this was their fate. They were created to be used as tools for the sake of humanity, who could not carry out the fight against the machines on their own. A2 retorted quickly by explaining that she wasn't afraid to fight for the sake of humanity, but she didn't want to have to suffer through her comrades dying. A2 and A4 then reminiscent over their artificial memories. All Yorha units had received artificial memories as a way to help them in forging a personality, as more diversity between the units would result in different behaviors when Put in a difficult situation. Back up outside of the elevator, S21 removed her visor and reassured Anemone that she was happy to have met her. Anemone replied by telling her not to worry, as she would be joining them soon as well, which caused S21 to smile. When the elevator had reached its destination, Anemone shot S21 in the head before pressing her gun to her own temple with the intention of ending it all. But a voice inside stopped her. All of her squad members had fought to their very last breath and suffered, so who was she to try and end and her life so conveniently. Set on proving the voice wrong, Anemone attempted to throw herself into the fry once again with weapons in both hands. Down in the server room, the remains of the squad met with two strange young girls. They had been watching over the androids, studying them and contemplating why they try so hard to fight even though they were made to be cast away for the sake of humanity. They then call out several machines to fight the androids. Daisy, Aster, and Erica were quickly taken out only to be brought back by the machines to fight on their side. Sonia was stabbed and Rose was fatally wounded. The terminal continued to question why the androids persistently fought with so much hope. Daisy, Aster, and Erica wounded A4 before the terminal went in for the kill, but not before she could thank A2 for giving her a reason to fight. A2 swore that she would destroy the server with her own hands, but the terminal assured her that the only thing that can destroy it would be a massive explosion. A2 placed her hand over her chest in disbelief at her fate, to which the girls only feed her belief that they'd been betrayed by command by having bombs implemented into them. Suddenly, A4 rose from the ground only to throw herself at the terminal. A2 screamed as a huge explosion went off. Still alive, Anemone searched the scorched earth for any of her comrades without any luck. Because she'd been afraid to die, she was the only one left. Overcome with emotion, Anemone started to giggle at the absurdity of her own words. She had promised to join S21 and the others in death. Yet, she was still alive. Anemone became the coward who stayed behind. And because of this, she promised herself that she would fight the machines until she found someone who could kill her. After the mission, A2's black box signal was confirmed to still be online, meaning that she survived alongside Anemone. After displaying great adaptability skills during the mission, A2's unit was used as a basis for the upcoming Yorha androids. However, after having realized that Project Yorha betrayed her squad and only ever intended for them to be used as experiments for future androids, she deserted the project and became an outlaw. Because she knew too much, future Yorha androids were given the permission to kill her on sight. I hope you found this video interesting. The Yorha project has a lot of interesting backstory that I strongly encourage you to go check out for yourself. If you are still very very curious about all of this backstory, I recommend watching the stage play titled Yorha, which was written by Yoko Taro himself, as it is about the Pearl Harbor descent mission. 
hopefully I'll see you in another video some other day. Thank you so much for watching.